Wasserfonds. Mike's Daily Podcast. F -F 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 episode 1120. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. And today we hear from Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, Bison, Bentley, plus the return of the fun segment where we learn about interesting things in the art world, sort of called Jarrell Name. Mike's Daily Podcast. And we will look over some interesting news stories you didn't know maybe that are happening right now with you, maybe. Hop. Mike's Daily Podcast. Hop. Hop. I feel like a rabbit all of a sudden. Maybe because I went to the fair yesterday in Pleasanton. That's where you can find a bunch of little animals and little piggies and then lots of carnies. They don't like to be called that, my friend. Okay, uh, the ride workers. Yeah, what a... Mike's Daily Podcast. What a hard job. My gosh, it was hot out there. There's a big, like, tarmac parking lot that they put all the rides on. Mike's and it's so hot. Daily and yesterday wasn't that hot. Podcast. But it was hot anyway, so... Yeah! I feel like a rabbit. And then I got there, and I didn't realize that rides were only $1 yesterday for some reason. So I looked around. I bought one ride ticket. And I said, because I'm only going to ride one ride. And then my stomach told me, don't ride the ones that make you puke. And then I walked over and I found that big Ferris wheel. But it's not the Ferris wheel. It's the one where it's kind of like, it looks like an umbrella holding up a cup. If that makes any sense. A big metal thing is, you're, you're, you're dangling. You're da it dangles you in this little sort of shielded cup. If that makes any sense. That was the Ferris wheel that went the highest. So I said, I'm going to do that one. But I went to get on it, and the guy says, no, no, no. You can't ride this alone. I'm not hinting at all what ethnicity this man was, but he said that. And I said, oh. And there were these two lovely ladies that were kind of heavy getting on the ride. And I said, hey, can I ride in the thing with you? And they said, sure. So we were, you know, we could have been the heaviest. I'm not saying we were, but we could have been the heaviest, and that would have been awesome. But I think I was there. Oh, look, it just walked in. I think I was there, though, more not only to leech off of them and be able to ride a ride and maybe meet some hot, lovely ladies, but also because they had their little daughter with them. I don't know if it was their daughter or what, but she was like seven, and she was scared. She was scared to ride the thing. She all like just before the thing started, she's like, "I don't want to go." And the two ladies kind of talked her into it, and I said to her, "You're going to see the best view of the fair ever." And then she kind of calmed down, and by the end of the ride, she was so happy she did it. So yay, that's good. And and it probably changed her life because I know when I was seven. Things happened, and I still remember them. It was a very impressionable age. In fact, I went to Santa Cruz at 7 and rode all those rides I was talking about. I think it was the last show. But yeah, look who just walked in. Hello, my God, it's Madame Rudebega. It sounds like you met some lovely ladies at the fair. <coughs> Piggies, all of course, just walked in. Hello, dear Mike. Hello, dear Madame Rudebega. It's Valentino the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, I don't like fairs because it's so expensive, day. Yeah, expensive. Do you know that? Uh, yeah, it is kind of pricey at a fair. To get a beer at the fair, the cheapest one I found was $13. <laughs> that worked perfectly that time. <laughs> uh, just, uh... That sound effect just happened on its own, and I just timed it per Okay, that was amazing to no one else but me. But yeah, $13 for a beer, come on! That's ridiculous. So, incidentally, I noticed none of the beer gardens had anybody at, or had anybody drinking anyway. Nobody was at the bars buying anything. The poor bartenders were just standing there waiting for something to happen. Of course, it was early in the day, but still... And then anything you want to buy is so expensive as far as food goes. I don't know about actual... Oh my gosh, there's just so much junk. There was one pavilion. I'll call it the Redneck Pavilion. 
wow. It was every sham wow and and crappy piece of horrible, every bad commercial you see on TV. Limited time only. Buy this now. And if you buy it now, you'll get this extra thing you don't want. All those type of commercials, all those products were there. And you're walking by the booth and they ask you some question they know you can't just say no thanks to. It's sort of like, sir, do you have, what are you paying? Oh, yeah. It was like Xfinity or Comcast or one of those douches said to me, hey, sir, what are you paying in in cable? Or no, who's your service provider or something? And I just said, bye. Back to the world, though, that you live in. The world where you live. It's the world that you live. Whoa. Crowded house. Bernie. Bernie has finally... Smelled the coffee. He's finally opened his frickin' eyes. And he said, for the very first time today, it doesn't appear I'm going to be the nominee. It does not appear that I'm going to be the nominee. It does appear that the earth is round. I didn't saw it when I was walking along. I saw it look flat. But when I got in a plane... And I flew around this world. I realized it wasn't flat because it actually kept going around in a circle. And Bernie, it's done. Here's what it came down to. Bernie had so many supporters. Oh, I thought one, one extra thing in the Bernie impression. Uh, Corporations are ruining the world. Okay, thank you, Bernie. All right, and then, yeah, all the supporters were, you know, he had huge rallies. Huge amounts of support. And he didn't want to let him down. So he had to keep this kind of ridiculous, okay, he's not that stupid, is he? Approach to everything. Of, oh, I, I still have a viable path to the White House. <laughs> even though there was not even a, the, he was a, he was on an, there was a wall. No way for him to get to the White House at all. The White House was so far away. It was in a completely other time dimension. So he said, fine, today. Today, June 23rd, he said that. Brian Cranston is going to be in a Power Rangers reboot. I, ca- I caught a couple like moments of Power Rangers and thought it was colorful. So this will be interesting. Brian Cranston rebooted some other movie that did actually really well, Godzilla. He was in that reboot, and that got a lot of critical, play- critical plays. Whatever, and people liked it. Tomorrow, uh, today, it's Brexit or Bremain. Who brick Brickin cares? It's this is a bre. Anyway, brevity is the key. Brexit or Bremain? Uh, they're saying the bad weather will cause people to vote for Brexit, but uh, they said also too that. If it's close and who, who knows it'll be interesting if we if they do brexit it will cause a lot of problems a lot of uh, economic issues are going to happen so let's keep our fingers crossed that they remain and then the alligator was captured dead ate the two-year-old in florida that's so sad and we know that alligator will be turned into gator bites soon Gator bites are delicious, by the way. Of course, if you deep fry anything, it's good. But there was this one... The first time I went to Florida to visit my mom in Daytona Beach, she took me to get gator bites. And she would say, Do you want to get some gator bites? And we'd get gator bites. It was so delicious. You dip them in a little sauce. Um, Since then, that restaurant has stopped serving gator bites. I guess it's not as easy to get alligator meat anymore. Maybe a good thing for the alligators. Oh, and by the way, one quick thing about the Democrats uh, taking over the House. The the House of Representatives. So the Senate, at least, the Republican senators said, all right, let's, let, let's take a look at some gun legislation. Let's go ahead and do this. This was horrible what happened in Florida. Let's just at least take a look at it. And they at least passed some, or they uh, try, you know, brought up a proposition house of representatives did nothing because it's 
yes, the Republicans own the Senate and the House of Representatives, but the House of Representative Republicans are crazy f- teabaggers of the worst kind. And they don't even want to say, don't touch my gun. No, nothing up about guns at all. So the Democrats finally said no. And they took over the floor. And they, they, they said, shame, 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 when Paul Ryan was trying to talk. And they sang, we shall overcome, and a bunch of other protest songs. And they, are, they took the damn thing over. Good thank you to them. Good job. Well done. Wow. And that happened yesterday. Damn. Finally, gosh, the House of Representatives and freaking John Boehner even said I had enough. This is it's just too batch crazy in here. So anyway, you can see all that. Well, not particularly that, but you can hear all the past shows and check out the podcast picture. Oh, which is here, by the way. And here's today's podcast picture. Podcast picture is with none other than the brewmaster. Hello, brewmaster. Hello, damn Mark. I'm at the root brown the brewmaster. Oh, boy. Thanks for not talking about Trump. Because if you did, I'd cut you. But I talked about John Boehner. Whatever. So, uh, the brewmaster and I talk in today's cartoon. See him and I in the podcast picture. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com is where you can do that. You can find us on Facebook, too, and Twitter and all that. The links to all those at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. If you'd like to help support the show, there's an Amazon link. Click on that and buy whatever it is you're going to buy, and that helps us out. And there is also the PayPal if you'd like to donate, and and you'll get a special greeting from all the Cafe Anyway characters. All that is at Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. And now, Jarell <laughs> Jarrell Name. With Jarrell Name today is all about changing your cell phone plan because phone plans suck. And yo yo yo, hey, we're gonna we're gonna speak talk real talk. Do I sound cool at all when I talk like that, Jarrell? I don't know the terminology of the modern world, so therefore I can't tell you. Oh, okay. But Jarrell's helped me out with my mobile phone plan, yo, because we keeping it on the no AT&T tip, because they're, like, bad. Wait, what's the phone plan? Verizon's pretty bad, too, huh? Well, the thing is, they have good service. It's just a matter of how much you actually can afford. Oh, they charge you? I would assume so. I mean, if you've seen the racing, you ask other people what they think of these different networks. Some people actually like them because it suits their needs. If it suits your needs and it's within your budget, then stick with it. That's that's what I always say is pick the service that best suits your needs and your budget. See, and I don't like the whole contract thing because then I have to pay them. And then there's all these weird fees. I hate all the fees. Sprint totally dinged me with fees last time. Like there was over $100 worth of fees, and all I did was change one little thing. It was crazy. I used to actually be with Sprint, and what I thought was going to be one particular bill, then, of course, there were taxes, and then it turned out there was a premium data plan for the Android to go on with the regular plan that I wanted. Uh And even before then, when I had some else to begin with Sprint. They added something and tried to add the price on to that, but I told them, no, I did not do that. But they insisted I did, so then I actually emailed them the original paperwork that I had that I had the sales associate print out for me, uh-huh. and I said, take this off, or we're going to have to escalate this. And believe you me, they took it off. Wow, so you actually... See, because like, I had that issue, and then I couldn't... It, it's like the guy at the store promised me all this stuff, and then tell. Then I finally got a hold of him, and he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, no. What do you have? Triple A? Yeah, you can get a discount with that." And it was nowhere near the discount that I thought I was going to get. So, the keywords usually before the percentage is up to. Oh yeah, so I should have made a photocopy and and then said this is going to escalate. The bottom line is, in anything, you always want to get written information, not off not off the mouth of somebody who's really just basically kissing your butt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely... All those guys in those sprint shops, I don't trust them. Hey, aren't we talking about anime today? What do you... So your convention's next week. Where do you go eat when you're down in L.A.? Oh, there's a few places close by, but actually there's an indoor cafeteria in the convention center. So many times I just eat there. But there is where I'm staying at, the hotel I'm staying at, there is an international house of pancakes right across the street. An IHOP? 
That's correct. You, but they're all over the place. Yes, but there's one right across the street from the hotel I stay at. When I, I stayed in Portland uh, for a couple days, this was like four years ago, and there was an IHOP like down, like not across, well, I was like on the fourth floor and I looked down and I could see all the people eating an IHOP. And dude, you're not heavy enough to eat an IHOP. You got to be at least 500 pounds. If that's the case, then that would be discriminatory, which can lead to all kinds of lawsuits. Yeah, we don't want to go there. All right. That that was Cracker Barrel's problem. They don't have any Cracker Barrels here in uh, California. They're all over the South, and it's basically like a Denny's, but they try and make it all homey. Not homey. Home style. Like home... Uh, what am I trying to say? Country-ish. You know, like barrels everywhere. And they've got weird things on the menu, like the chicken fried fried steak with gravy. I'm making myself hungry. Have you been to one? No, I have not. That's actually the first I've ever heard of it. You might want to treat that hunger, because it's very difficult to do a podcast on an empty stomach. But you're saying I should go to IHOP. They're pretty good. If you want to, if pancakes and other particular breakfast meals are your thing, and they probably have some lunch stuff too, then by all means. Again, what what suits your particular taste? Now, we talk a lot about anime on Jarel Nui, and that's Japanese art. What's your favorite Japanese food? Do you like Japanese food? It would have to be sushi. And And what do you get at sushi places? I usually get the stuff that, that's uh, topped with seafood. So mm-hmm. such as salmon, you know, I even tasted one with crab. Oh, God, told it. oh, that was fantastic. But, yeah, I not, I, I actually only had sushi recently, like probably three weeks ago, and now I'm hooked. Is there any good places in Oakland, near the, the Oakland land? I'm quite an introvert when it comes to my own hometown. So I could tell you the one I went to, it actually tasted really good. It was in Cupertino, and, oh. and I forgot the name of it, so I'll have to look it up. Okay. What what were we going to talk about anime wise? We talked about Cowboy Bebop, S- Sailor Moon. What was the other uh, anime we were going to talk about? That you is there any other types that you like? We could talk about the stuff that's currently on the mainstream media, which is mainly the anime Naruto. What is that? It is the story of a kid who, and this there's some there's some science, uh, not not science, but there's mainly some magic into this if you will because it follows the concept of chakra so it's a bunch of ninjas okay it's based the baseline of the anime is a bunch of ninjas uh-huh. so you have this one character whose name is naruto uzumaki and he has been implanted with the spirit the, the spirit of this fox demon so his chakra is way more powerful than many of the others in his village uh-huh. now originally they were scared of him because he they knew that he had the fox demon in him via a seal but his willpower and his courage and his love for his for his particular village overcame that of the fox demon so he did not become demonic instead that he actually became a hero in their eyes and therefore they were just like yeah naruto's the best do you watch Game of Thrones? No. I hate when people ask me that. Sorry. I don't either. And and I had a beer with someone on Friday, and they asked me that question, and I said no. And they looked at me like I was some kind of freak. Uh, okay, folks, let me share with you something right now, because we get a lot of this throughout the days. There is going to be diversity. Okay, if there was no diversity, you would be bored out of your brain. Yeah. And furthermore, for those of you who are also nailing on the geeks, remember, it's those geeks that did all of that calculus and math that actually allowed you to have a roof over your head. It's those geeks that actually allowed you to have the electronics that you had today. Yeah. It's those geeks that actually built the amusement parks, the bridges to get us from road to road, the cars that we drive. So will you knock that junk off? Wow, thanks for saying that. I never built a car, though. I am a bit of a nerd, but... But you did build a podcast that is very entertaining. Oh, thanks! I built something! You know, I was thinking about Taylor Swift the other day. You might be wondering where this is going. But, you know, Taylor Swift, right? She builds songs. In a way, she is a builder, even though she... She doesn't really build something, you know, physical. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's virtual construction. Yeah, and people sing her songs, but she constructed this thing that you can't really touch, but you, you, you hear it, so it's weird. Yeah, it's an audible building. Huh. 
Taylor Swift. Wildest dreams. Uh What song are you all into now? Uh, Currently, I'm into uh, some of the songs that were produced by the Japanese uh, group Dice. What are their stuff like? Is it like dance pop? It's common. It's basically under the genre of J-pop, but they go everything from slow, slow tempo to high tempo. You know, basically from when it sound almost like dance beat to uh, basically just different types. So, but one of the songs that I like in particular is there's actually two of them. It's called "Watch Out" and the other one's "Up to the Stars." Do they sing in English? They actually do. There's actually some of their music is on YouTube right now. Oh, just don't download it illegally. Help support them. That's right. Think about your good artist friends that are poor and hungry and like me, I'm hungry and I want to go get some sushi. Well, you know, too, uh, back, you know, years ago, like almost two or three decades ago, musicians were making money selling records, but now they're making money selling seats. That's right, because of the concerts and stuff. Yep. And you went and saw, what was that 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 you saw in San Francisco? that band oh that's the uh hatsune miku concert so look in in japan what they do is they say when folks first introduce themselves they say the last name first and then the first name so the character the character miku hatsune is actually an avatar to a vocal synthesis program so technically they don't actually exist but throughout japan when they actually first tested this particular software which is which was made by krypton media they just played it in the background of different areas throughout the blocks of the streets, and then people started getting into it. Uh-huh. But basically what it is, is it's a vocal vocal synthesis program that basically you type in the lyrics based on the tempo and the notes you want the program to generate, uh-huh. and then the program generates the, those lyri- the vocals of, that, of those lyrics. Uh-huh. So... If you can't if you can't afford a vocalist, this is one way to do it. Now, of course, it's not exactly perfect because a computer can only do so much with digital audio to make it sound decent. But of course, there's still more research and development that needs to be done to make it sound fluent as an actual human. Now, of course, these vocals were sampled by a human, so obviously there is a little bit of royalties there. But I don't actually I don't know the politics on that, so don't quote me on that. This is the wave of the future, and don't quote him on that. Hey, it's amazing. So someone could take my voice right now and make a completely other a mic, maybe a mic with hair out of it. I would say more than likely they would need your written consent. I'll give them my written consent, and they'll give me several million dollars. I hope you do. And the other thing, uh, parents, many times they actually show the avatars to be pretty... Uh, Pretty friend, child friendly. Oh, and you look on the bright side; they will never do drugs uh-huh. unless they are programmed to do drugs. <laughs> they will they will not get emotional unless they're programmed to get emotional. Uh-huh. And so far, people gravitate more to the positive side than the negative side. That's great. That I think that says a good thing about the human race. Yeah. One more thing: when he said concert, so basically what happened is they put the avatar on a holographic screen. And here's here's the punchline. You ready for this? Wait for it. There is an actual live band playing with the Avatar. Ah, so they're live. They're they're humans. Yes, they are humans, and of course they're kept on time via a click track that you can't uh, that you can't hear, but it's in their headphones. Oh, okay. Well, thank you, Jarrell. We learned a lot today about music and anime and food and Taylor Swift. I'm like fading out. I need some. Do you have sushi in your jacket? That's not something you want to keep unrefrigerated because that's rice with mostly some raw food in a way that's safe to eat and that could easily spoil. So you want to make sure you kind of keep it refrigerated. Otherwise, it can go bad and you don't want food poisoning. My dad already experienced that not too long ago with some bad mango juice. And, uh, yeah, he was uh, he was in the bathroom for quite a while, literally pe- almost puking his guts out. So is the answer to my question no? The long way, yeah, that is correct. Okay. Jerome and I, thank you so much for being on my Silly Podcast. Yay, yay! Thank you, Jerome. As we go outside a cafe anyway, we're bringing Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley. Next show, it's Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Foreman, and John Deere, the engineer. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. 
Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.